Alec. What are some of the problems? What are some of the prediction uh, uh, um, uh, issues that need to be dealt with uh, that make it difficult uh, for physics to predict everything? Okay. Well, I think um, one of the problems that physics is suffering from now uh, is perhaps some, in some sense a symptom of the success of physics, uh, which is that lots of things about the natural world we understand. We have this standard model of particle physics, we call it, uh, which allows us to predict uh, the results of essentially every experiment uh, that we know how to do in particle physics so that we have the capability of doing, uh, with the possible exception of understanding neutrino masses, which, uh, which can be fit into this theory, but not necessarily in a unique way. So there's still some mysteries associated with neutrino masses. Uh, but otherwise, this theory is just remarkably successful. And that means that new ideas have to go beyond standard model uh, and really beyond the range that accelerators, that particle accelerators uh, can currently reach. Um, and that means that there's, in the recent history of physics, uh, and I'm really talking, I guess, about mainly about particle physics, uh, there have gotten to be longer and longer gaps between theoretical ideas and the ability to test those ideas. So the most recent major experimental success in physics was the verification of the existence of the Higgs particle uh, in summer of 2012 uh, at CERN. Uh, and that was, I think, about 50 years past the time when this Higgs particle was predicted. Uh, and a bigger problem as far as experimental verification is ideas about quantum theories of gravity. Uh, I'm firmly convinced, and I think most of the physics community is firmly convinced, that we need a quantum theory of gravity. Uh, so I'm convinced, and I think most of the physics community is convinced, that we need a quantum theory of gravity. Uh, right now we have general relativity to describe gravity, but that's a classical theory. Uh, it does very well, and all the effects of gravity that we see are very macroscopic and classical, so it's essentially all we need to describe most of what we see around us. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we do need to have a union of these theories. It's not just a philosophical desire. I think it really is just inconsistent to imagine a classical theory of gravity interacting with a quantum theory of matter. Um, and uh, the best developed uh, answer to that question is string theory. Uh, but string theory has to some extent stagnated uh, really almost from the beginning maybe, uh, because it's so hard to test. Um, any experimental test of string theory um, of the type that we might know how to do, predict now would be at energy scales vastly beyond what we can reach. So string theorists struggle hard to find maybe some effective string theory that would be visible at lower energies. So far really nothing has been found. Uh, so the problem of how to test string theory uh, is a serious one. Uh, and I don't think it means that string theory should be forgotten. I think the ultimate question of what the fundamental structure of space-time is, which is what string theory is about, is one that we certainly, from an intellectual point of view, want to be able to pursue. So what we're seeing in string theory and some other aspects of physics as well is that the time scale between theoretical ideas and the ability to test them observationally is just getting longer and longer. And I hope civilization will be patient enough uh, to tolerate that extra length of time that I think is going to be necessary uh, and we'll have to see how things develop. You've been a participant in the most remarkable adventure showing how when you understand the microstructure of particle physics you can actually explain the entire universe, at least how it began and aspects of its, uh, of its structure and, and development. Uh, but how much can you reflect upon the ability of physics to not just explain the universe, but to explain things that we find in life, in terms of, uh, of uh, physical life, in terms of human life, and different expressions. Uh, and it's called reductionism. I mean, how, how much of explaining the world can you think that can ultimately be done in terms of particle physics? Right. In some future science, however many millions of years in the future, is it possible in principle for particle physics to describe the fact that you and I are enjoying our conversation. <laughs> right, right. Uh, well, I guess I'm an optimist as far as uh, the reductionist approach. Um, I, I first of all 
believe that ultimately everything is a manifestation of some set of fundamental laws of physics, which we are better and better approximating as time goes on. We certainly don't know the ultimate laws yet. Uh, but when we do, I think uh, there will be a set of ultimate laws that will describe everything. Um, I can't say I know this for sure. I think my belief in that statement really rests entirely on a kind of an Occam's razor kind of argument. Uh, I think everything that we know so far is consistent with the idea that there exists a unique fundamental set of laws which controls everything. And to me, that's the simplest hypothesis by far. Uh, anything else I have trouble even imagining. Uh, so, it's a belief only, not a fact, but I believe that ultimately there is a set of fundamental laws that controls everything. Now that doesn't necessarily answer the question of will, will we ever be able to understand those laws well enough to be able to have a full physical understanding of the conversation that you and I are now having. Uh, and that's harder to say, uh, but uh, certainly uh, human knowledge and the ability of humans to understand complicated phenomena has been increasing dramatically and steadily right up to the present. Uh, and there's certainly no, time of, no sign of it stopping. It will presumably evolve into uh, uh, our increasing our understanding through programming computers that will uh, learn how to understand those things better than, uh, do, better yeah. than we do, ultimately. I, I think that's unavoidable. Um, and I would say that there's no foreseeable limit on how far that can go. Uh, so I can't say for sure that we'll someday, with the help of computers, be able to understand our conversation. Uh, but I certainly would not want to rule it out either. Some people would point to consciousness, the inner subjective experience that, that we all sense, as a differentiator. That, that you can explain everything in the physical world, but you're not going to be able to explain consciousness. Uh, yes, I've certainly heard that. Um, I find it hard to believe that there's anything magical behind consciousness. Uh, I would certainly think that consciousness is just a manifestation of the physics uh, of the stuff that we're made out of. Um, I think it would take a lot to convince me that there was anything more than that. Um, obviously, we're incredibly complicated systems, which I think means that we don't really uh, a priori have any way of telling what the limitations would be of a physical system of that degree of complexity. Uh, so I don't think there's any reason to leap to a conclusion uh, that there has to be something magical beyond the laws of physics to explain phenomena like consciousness. So uh, my guess is that someday it will be explained.